This is lesson three in chapter seven. Today we're going to look at logarithmic functions and explore how they are inverses of exponential functions. You can see that's a highlighted sentence right here. When we use a logarithm of base 10, we can say that's called the common log, so you won't see the base in the notation. And you can write log base 10 of y as just log of y because it's understood base is 10 there. And you may be familiar with uh, the Richter scale when we're talking about earthquakes. That's a logarithmic scale. That's any scale that uses a logarithm for a quantity instead of using the quantity itself. So let's jump into the lesson. First, we want to talk about the graphs of the functions. We'll start with the parent function. That's y equals log base b of x provided b is bigger than zero and not one. We have a stretch factor, y equals a times log base b of x if the absolute value of a is larger than one. And using that same model equation, a times log base b of x is gonna be a compression or a shrink factor if that number is between zero and one. And I'm using absolute value because the reflection in the x-axis is when this a value as a factor, if that's a negative number, then you have a reflection of your parent across the x-axis. You can move logs to the left by having an argument x minus h. And if it's x minus h, it moves right. If it's x plus h, it moves left. And you can move that log graph up by adding a number k or subtracting a number k. The h, k ordered pair translates the parent function h left and right, k up and down. Then putting all the translations together, a times log base b of x minus h plus k is the model equation for translating any logarithmic function. Next, we want to talk about the definition. I have here, if x is b to the y, then the log base b of x equals y. So basically, I'm saying... If x is a number, then the base raised to a power, so we're going to write that this way, any base raised to a power is equal to a number. So you can rewrite that. Log base b of a number equals a power if and only if the base raised to the power produces that number. So I'm using B for base, P for power, and N for number in the way our definition is using X and Y and B for base. So to practice this, in example one, we want to write 36 as 6 squared as a logarithm. So we're going from exponential form. This is our exponential form, and we're converting it to log form. Log base B of a number equals the power. So six to the second power is 36. So a logarithm is a power. Let's write that down. Logarithm is a power. A logarithm is a power. So that's really important. In example B, we have log base B. So this is our base. This is our power, and this is the number that is produced. So log base b of a number equals the power. A logarithm is a power. Three is the power up here. And then finally, log base three of the number is the power. 
In example two, we want to evaluate logarithms. So I want to think about this as log base 5 of 125 is going to give us some power. So we saw that 5 to the power has to be 125, and our trick is going to turn be to turn 125 as a power of 5. That way, when the bases are the same, then the powers are equal. So here, our power is 3. 5 to the third power is 125. In example B, we're going to do the same thing. Log base 4 of 32 is going to give us some power. So 4 to the power is 32. But here, we've got to be a little clever. We know 4 can be rewritten as 2 squared. So 4 to the x is 32. Well, 32 is 2 to the fifth. So here I have 2 to the 2x power, because when you're raising a power to a power, you multiply. So 2 times x gave us the 2x. And the bases are the same, so the powers are equal. 2x equals 5. So x is 2 and a half, or 5 over 2. <clears throat> Finally, for our last one, log base 64 of 1 over 32 is going to give us a power. So 64 to the x power is 1 over 32. Now, we got to be clever again. 64 is 2 to the 6th power. And 32, we saw earlier up here, 32 is 2 to the 5th power. Now, I've got the bases are the same. If we rewrite 2 to the 6x power is equivalent to 2 to the negative 5 power. So I want to move this to the numerator, which means we need a negative on the power. So when the bases are the same, right here, let's make a note of that. When the bases are the same, then the powers are equal. The powers are equal. So we want to solve for when the powers are equal. And this means 6x has to be negative 5. So the power would be negative 5 over 6. A logarithm is a power. This is our power. Example three is an example of using the Richter scale. The formula here compares the intensity of earthquakes where I is the intensity level, that's this numerator and denominator, and that's determined by a seismograph, and M is the magnitude of the earthquake from the Richter scale. So in 1995, Mexico registered an 8.0 on the Richter scale, and then in Washington State in 2001, there was a 6.8 magnitude on the Richter scale. And we want to know how many times more intense was the Mexico earthquake compared to the Washington earthquake. Using that formula, we know that the, we'll say M1 is 8, that's the Mexico, and M sub 2 is 6.8, that's the Washington so we got one for Mexico and one for Washington. And our formula says we need to subtract those and compare that to the intensity of the first one compared to the intensity of the second one. So 8 minus 6.8 on the Richter scale gives us 1.2, the difference in the intensity. And then we want to solve for I1 and I2. Now, do you notice that this step right here, this is base 10 since it's common log. We have the common log. Common log is base 10. So we can say, using the definition of logarithms, we can say log base 10 of this number is equal to the power 1.2. So Rewriting that in exponential form, we have I sub 1 over I sub 2 is equal to 10 to the 1.2 power. Now, if you grab out your calculator, 10 to the 1.2 power is about 15.849.
So to put that into words, we would say that the 1995 quake that happened in Mexico was about 16 times stronger than the 6.8 earthquake that happened in 2001 in Washington State. Okay, so we're using the formula for a Richter scale and the intensity to calculate how much stronger one was than the other. Next, we want to graph, and I'm going to graph the parent function in red, and we'll graph our translated inverse function in blue. So substituting 2 here, so if we think about 2 to the negative 2 power, that gives us 1 fourth. And then working our way down the table, 2 to the negative 1 is a half, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1st, and 2 to the 2nd. So at the beginning of the lesson, we said a logarithm was an inverse of an exponential function. And if we come over here and graph our um, red graph, I said I was going to do that in red, and here I'm drawing dots in blue. So graphing that in red, we got a fourth, a half, one, one, two, and two, four. This is our parent function or our exponential function, y equals 2 to the x power, and our y-intercept is 0, 1. You can see that right there. Now, in blue, if a logarithm is an inverse, then we want to interchange the x's and the y's. What was y here now becomes x in our logarithm, and they are interchanged. What was xy is now yx. So graphing these in blue, we're going to have a graph of the inverse. When x is a fourth, y is negative two. When x is a half, y is negative one. And then one zero, two one, four two. And we could continue on. Eight would be three. And 16 would be 4. If you follow that logic, I'm just reversing 2 to the power. So here we have 1, 0 on our log graph. This is y equals log base 2 of x. And if you remember from earlier in the year, an inverse function is a reflection across the diagonal, y equals x, and I'm gonna sketch that in right there so you can see. What was four, two here is two, four on the inverse function. Now they also want us to describe the domain and the range. So in red, the domain for two to the x power is all reals. And the range is from 0 to infinity, so only positive values. But in our log graph, y equals log base 2 of x, the domain of the log is the range on the exponential function. And the range on the log is the domain on its inverse. And identify the y-intercepts. Well, on a red graph, we have a y-intercept of 0, 1. So that's our y-intercept. And we have y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. But on our blue graph, we have no y-intercept. Instead, we have an x-intercept of 1, 0. That's our x-intercept. And we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So they're a little different. Now here in example five, you can see at this place where we're wanting to graph log base two of x plus one. So in order to be able to do that, I've subtracted one from both sides and that's given me two log base two of x. So if we use the property of logs, two to the y minus one power is going to be our x. 
and I want to use that table and say 2 to the y minus 1 power. So 2 to the y minus 1, so negative 1, and then minus 1 is equal to our x, which makes our x 1 fourth. And then 2 to the 0 minus 1, I'm taking this y value, is 2 to the negative 1, so that's a half. And 2 to the 0 power, 1 minus 1, is going to be 1. 2 to the 0 is 1. And then 2 to the first power is going to be 2. And then lastly, we're going to have 2 to the 3 minus 1 or 2 squared is 4. Now we want to graph that. We have when x is 1 fourth, y is negative 1. When x is a half, y is 0. And then 1, 1, and 2, 2, and 4, 3. And there's our translated graph. Now let's put into words what just happened. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. This is our vertical asymptote, is the vertical asymptote. And what happened to our parent graph one zero? So our parent would have the graph one zero, and this one translated up one unit to one one. So we have this point on the parent that's normally at one zero has now translated itself up one unit. And we wanna say that in some words. Describe how the graph of the function compares to the parent function. So we would say this graph translates the parent point. It translates each y value. Isn't that what moved? That was zero, it moved up one each y value of the parent. And we'll say parent in quotes of the parent function. One unit up. And we could give that example. We use the ordered pair one zero that would be on the parent. In this case, it's now moved up to one one. Okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs>